Hello everyone, it's Mrs. Wallace. I just wanted to note one concept that we didn't get to uh, review in class and it has to do with the shape of the marginal uh, cost curve. So I thought I would just take a minute to um, describe that to you. Uh, we were looking at our um, per unit costs, okay? So a graph where we put marginal cost, average variable cost, average total cost, and average fixed cost together, okay? Um, this cost curve graph is also very, very connected to uh, the production uh, function um, that we introduced very loosely in class um, just by um, looking at the uh, relationship uh, between new inputs such as new workers, variable resources that get added um, in the short run when fixed resources can't be changed. Inevitably, what we see is the law of diminishing uh, marginal returns um, kick in. Okay, So it's kind of important to recognize that um, if we look at the marginal uh, product curve, okay, we saw that there were different uh, phases of production that actually affected the shape of the marginal marginal product. As new inputs were introduced to the manufacturing process, um, what was happening is initially some additional workers were enabling a greater division of labor, greater efficiency, and greater um, productivity. Marginal product was actually increasing. Okay, um, We would actually say at this point right here, the very kind of peak of the marginal product curve, that's essentially um, around the time where diminishing returns set in. As soon as as marginal product starts to diminish, we have diminishing returns. So whatever quantity of labor this would correspond to, maybe after the fourth worker or the fifth worker, we'd actually see a decrease in marginal product. Now it may mean that total product is still increasing, right, at a decreasing rate, but we generally see diminishing marginal product as something really significant. On the cost side, okay, we see a parallel costs are decreasing. So notice that these are two different graphs, okay? Um, the first graph has quantity of labor in the x-axis, on the x-axis, and marginal product on the y-axis, right? So what's happening over greater and greater quantities of labor is we're seeing diminishing marginal product. The second graph, we're really looking at a totally different graph, okay? But um, a mirror shape of the cost curve to the marginal product curve. In this case, we're looking at what happens over greater and greater quantity of the product, greater quantity of coffee mugs, yo-yos, hats, whatever it is, um, what's happening to the cost. This is the cost of production. We're not yet talking about what the consumer is paying, um, although that may relate. We are talking about the cost to produce the good. So we notice that maybe the first, second, third, fourth um, you know, coffee mugs become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. You know, and why is that, right? Because the marginal product is increasing per uh, worker, right? Every next worker is increasing their marginal product. That's more efficient. It's specialized. Um, it's going to lend itself to lower costs, okay? At a certain point, okay, and it happens to be the same uh, where the quantity of labor is being introduced that actually decreases marginal product, that is exactly the same kind of spot on the cost curve as soon as we have diminishing marginal returns in the production side, that is when our costs start to increase because every single next input of labor has a cost attached to it. But each you know input of labor is making less of the good. So I'm getting less bang for my buck if I'm the CEO of this company. So my costs per unit are actually increasing. Okay. So if I was only looking at the marginal cost curve and I had to determine where does diminishing returns you know, begin, you know, it's essentially like right at the spot that's the minimum point is kind of where um, my marginal product had peaked. Um, as soon as I get to the next, um, you know, kind of uh, unit produced, my marginal costs have increased and diminishing uh, returns have set in, okay? Um, you can look at this because if we look at diminishing marginal returns and we look at what happens with marginal product and marginal cost, here I'm kind of putting together in the same data set, the quantity of work every new worker on the line that's making coffee mugs and let's look at our total product the first worker is making five the second worker is making an additional eight for a total of 13 the 
with a third worker, we get a total of 19, but the third worker is adding six. So this is where we see, you know, marginal returns start to kick in, right? Initially, there is a specialization, marginal product increases. By the time we reach uh, the third and the fourth um, worker, we're seeing marginal product decrease, okay? What's happening on the cost side, right? Well, if I know that I have $20 of fixed cost, so I'm always going to be paying 20 bucks, okay? So my total cost is always going to be 20 bucks plus the cost for each worker, which is $10 per worker, okay? So I have no workers, I still have to pay $20, okay? I don't really have a marginal cost for zero uh, product, right? But for um, the, uh, uh, you know, first five <laughs> products, right? I'm going to have a marginal cost of an additional uh, worker, okay? Um, if I look at, you know, $10, $10, $10, $10, right? Um, as my, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, always going to be my uh, change in um, total cost. If I look at that based on the change in total product, um, I can see that my um, marginal cost is actually going to be when one worker is making five and then the next worker comes on the line and makes eight, right? My um, cost of $10 is going really far, right? It's like for every single uh, you know, dollar that I'm spending on my worker, I'm getting like a good amount of products in return. But then later on, when I'm spending $10 on a worker and the worker's only making two, or I'm spending $10 on a worker who's only making one, my marginal cost to make that next unit, that next one unit is really expensive, right? Because the worker's only making one unit, right? I'm going to be paying a lot for that. So we see like a natural spot where my marginal uh, cost is increasing, okay? I'm going to stop it there. Sorry, my phone is going off, but I think you get the basic idea of why marginal cost is U-shaped, okay?